When there's a math lesson that's actually totally easy to understand out of the gates, it's like a big deal for all of us because math is confusing and complicated and it's a little frustrating sometimes, but zero and negative exponents are totally crystal clear and you'll probably love them because you're probably going to get an A plus on the quiz. Anything to the zero, okay, I start with zero and exponent. I don't care what the deal is. Anything to the zero, the answer is one. And I used to tell kids like, you know, they'd be like, um, Ryan, why is that? And I'd be like, zip it. Just memorize what I said, the answer is one. And that was a good plan for years, but I will explain, if you really care, I'll explain why anything to the zero is one right now. You, we agree that whenever you have something that's identical on the top and bottom, that the answer is always one. He goes into him exactly once, they're the same thing, so it's one. Five over five is one, 10 over 10 is one. When the top and bottom match, it's one. So this is why a zero exponent is one. If you had x to the fifth over x to the third, we agree that the way to solve that or to reduce that is x to the five minus three, right? So which would be x squared. Well, again, what happens if the top and the bottom are identical exponent-wise? So you agreed earlier, you said, okay, well, x squared over x squared, I, that makes sense that that's one. That's because you have x to the two minus the bottom exponent, oh, okay, that is x to the zero. Explanation aside, Let's go back to the plan, just memorize that anything to the zero is one. Okay, what is the most lame thing ever? 36x plus 9a plus 0.33b squared plus a house. All of that to the zero, what is the answer? The answer is totally just one, okay? So I don't care what is to the zero. Anything to the zero is one. So this is, that's done. So anything to the zero is one, that's pretty easy. Be careful. What if they're not attached, right? Like x, y to the zero. In this case, the answer is not one because the x is not to the zero, right? The y is. You have to be careful about parentheses and stuff. This would actually be, if there's no exponent, it's one. x to the one times y to the zero. x to the one is x times y to the zero is one. So you have to make sure that everything is being raised to the zero, and if it's not, you gotta treat them separately, right? So that's that. All right, same thing. Now, negative exponents are also pretty easy. If you had like five to the negative two, okay? You kinda know from like some math, you're like, well, if I thought five to the two is 25, what's the negative about? Whenever you have a negative exponent, all you do is take the reciprocal, okay? If this is five to the negative two, it's the same as one over five to the positive two. So that's step one. Flip it, don't even think, okay? If you have a negative exponent, flip it and don't worry too much. Now it's one over, what is five squared? Well, that's 25, there's your answer, okay? So let's do a few more of those because they can get a little weird with the whole negative exponent. Again, what if you add something like this, two thirds to the negative two? Now, because they're in parentheses, the two-thirds, the negative two applies to both. This is not the same as saying two-thirds to the negative two. That would only apply to the two. Since they're in parentheses, it totally applies to both. So what you do is you flip this sucker, three over two, and now it's to the positive two. By taking the reciprocal, you've remedied the negative. You've now made it positive. And then distribute to both, that would basically be nine over four. Three squared is nine. 2 squared is 4, and that's your answer, okay? So let me get all tricky with the parentheses, non-parentheses deal. What if you had this, x, y to the negative third? Would you flip this and say, oh, that's 1 over x, y to the third? No, be careful. Is the negative 3 attached to both the x and y? Or is it just attached to the y? The answer is it's only attached to the y. If I had parentheses, It'd be attached to both, but it's not. I don't have parentheses, so it's only attached to the y. So who gets reciprocaled? Not the x. The x is chilling where he is. The y to the negative three goes to the bottom now. Oops, excuse me. And now once I've flipped it, now he is positive. Okay, so that would simplify it to that. All right, another weird one, since we're on a roll with the weird ones, okay? You gotta admit though, this is pretty easy. Negative exponent, flip it. Okay, so here's one. 5 to the, you know, a to the negative 2. 
Who in this little scenario has a negative exponent? The 5 is like totally fine. You leave him out of this. He's got nothing. He has no exponent. And anybody that has no exponent, it's always a 1. So I'll write it there if that makes everyone in the room feel better. Uh, but the A is the guy with the issue, right? So let's write our 5 again. He didn't do, nothing happened to him. He has a negative exponent, so you have to take the reciprocal. And in the past, we've been doing ones on top went to the bottom. Well, if you're on the bottom with the negative exponent, then you're going to go, you're going to flip to the top. So this would be the simplified version of this sucker right here. So that's it. Anything to the zero is one. Anything with a negative exponent gets flipped if it's on the top. Flip it to the bottom. If it's on the bottom, flip it to the top. So that's a refreshing lesson in math where you feel like after one little video, you're like a complete professional. And oh, if only all of math could be like that. So that's it. If you're having a hard time at your local high school in your math class, take it online at Silicon Valley High School and uh, the credits will be transferred back to your school.